Hey guys, Matt, Iron Traps Garage, and today we're going to be doing some work on the Sweetheart Roaster. So, um, we've been kind of jumping around on this trying to tackle major projects that were not started or major pieces of the puzzle we need to figure out, like the pedals and stuff like that. And we kind of got things going in the right direction where we have the major pieces put where they are, they all seem to jive together, and we'll probably just need light modification to get them all uh, working perfectly in unison. So I'm going to jump back to doing some of the body and metal work on on the car since we've been doing some other stuff. Um, this is a little bit more of the tedious work that is tough to show in videos because it's kind of boring to be honest, but uh, I think it's an important uh, part of documenting the process of putting these cars together. So today we're going to be working on doing some of the fitting around the dashboard. Some of the arch of the dashboard is a little rough and wavy and things like that. Um, and just where the, da the dash and the doors meet and kind of come together, uh, that's just like raw edges that were kind of just cut and roughly placed together. Now that we have the tops of the doors welded and we should finish kind of where they come together. And then if I get time, I'm hoping, I might start working on doing some leading on the cowl, uh, which will involve just smoothing out some of these areas where we um, did some of our uh, piecing in of the of the bead and flowing everything and sculpting into the windshield frame. So we'll see where we get. I don't know. I'll start working and hopefully we get something that's interesting to watch done. So let's get started. Alright, so we're going to start on this side in here by the dash. A lot of the stuff I'm dealing with is really just my uh, lack of ability for fit and finish when I'm initially making panels and some of the stuff I just leave it a raw edge and then I come back and have to fix tune up all the edges fix all the edges and that was what we're kind of into on this car so I just had cut this roughly on the dash what I thought was going to work around the um, how the, I had the door kind of restyled and flows up a little higher and in um, so now it's just a little fat of a gap here and just sharp edges that need to be corrected and then there's a hole you know when you open the door there's a hole in here so what I think I'm going to do is make a pattern and make a piece that actually goes a little bigger and goes out into here so it's easier to weld and then it'll have a nice bend that'll go in there so I can move the piece in and out and get my gap around the door looking pretty good and then I'll hopefully be able to connect that piece in to where this little riser I made for the windshield frame is and start but you know closing all those gaps up and then I'll probably have to make a piece after that's in. I'll have to have the door open and make a little cap that maybe is concave that will not contact the, the door when it closes. So a bunch of little pieces you have to make to make everything kind of closed up and look a little better. Um, again, if I was probably, my skill level was a little higher, I could make that stuff out of one piece, but it's not. So we're gonna make it out of a bunch of pieces here. I also have to work on this gap between the door at the bead right here. Um, it was hard for me to kind of figure out where everything was gonna be. So I can tr also, weld up this gap here on the door edge um, or on the body edge here and try and get this gap from here to here. So we'll get this little corner kind of tuned up and looking a little better. Um, then we'll probably move the other side and go from there. But that's gonna work on first is getting the door to the dash gap um, transition looking a little better and some of the open edges welded up.
All right, so I got the, uh, we got the car flipped around off the lift because Steve is working on this 40 Ford we got over there and uh, I don't really need the lift. So you can see here, I got this tuned up and looking a little bit better. There's a nicer gap in there. I got this radius kind of flowing a little bit better like I like. There's a little bit of stuff that was old damage holes that I filled there that still aren't perfectly flat, but aren't a huge issue. The big thing was just getting this gap to kind of flow with the door. And when you're standing here and looking at it, looks half decent. So we're getting in the right direction. Um, we still have a little, see this little piece I welded. I didn't fully weld it here yet. I'm gonna weld that up here soon. I'm gonna make another little piece to go in there. This is just trying to connect all the dots when you're doing all this custom work. And then right here, I'm gonna eventually have to make a piece to go up to the windshield frame to kind of blend all that together. But I'm gonna wait to get the other side of the door done so we can pull the windshield on and off and do both sides at the same time. But that's just a little filler piece to make that look kind of more finished. So a lot of work into just a little tiny thing, but it's looking a lot better for now. So I'm gonna jump over to the other side and you can see kind of what we were starting with on the, the other side. So we got this big gap and it's a little jagged and whatever in there. So we'll do the same thing. We'll make a little piece to fit in that corner, get that kind of blended in and fill, and then we'll uh, start working on our next plan of action. guys replaced the regulator on your welder yet? No. Man, we gotta get on that. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give your dad hell. The cord? Yeah. Uh. Come, you got welding to do. <laughs> Turn your ass up, dad. What are you doing, being lazy, just sitting around watching TV? I'll get a rise out of him. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Oh yeah, I know how to get a rise out of my brother. What's he say to him? What are you being lazy just sitting around watching TV? Ah, oh, what? You know how much I did in the past two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> push it in, let it melt. Push it in, let it melt. So you can kind of heat it and move it around to make it like melt into itself. So when it's real thin like this, you gotta, because we're welding on the edge of stuff, so it's really thin, it wants to burn away. So you gotta kind of get some filler rod in there to get a base. And then I come back and melt it in a little bit. Only when we're doing edges like this, if this was a body panel. We wouldn't want to do that because it would warp the shit out of it. We're making puzzle pieces, it's not as crucial. And like when you're creating corners in like, like we're doing here where we're trying to create a corner, you, add a little more rod, because then you can grind it back to get the shape you want. And even when you do that, you still got a lot of time to come back and add a little bit of rod to get it to look how you want. Okay. All right, so I've been working on and off on this thing for days or a week, I don't even know. Um, so this video is one of those ones that's gonna be a lot of hours of work with not a lot to show. <laughs> but I got the door gaps and stuff on the edges of the dash looking a lot better. It's not overlapping, there's not like sharp edges and all that kind of stuff. So all that's looking pretty good. It's just, you know, it's wavy. It's, it's gonna need some filler and stuff like that. Um, I still need to work on the profile of the dash a little bit better. I regret using an original dash rail and 
molding it and welding it into my custom dash because that's what I'm fighting all the issues with it being wavy and messed up and whatever because there was tons of damage to begin with on that. So that is my fault for sure. I wish I just would have made it from scratch at this point. So um, I've been working on this door and I didn't really film much of it because I kind of got in the zone. But on this door, I got the gap looking pretty good here all the way down. I didn't really mess with down below the door hinge. I'm going to put it on the lift and kind of work on that. But got that all set up. Uh, this cow section here was a little high where I had made this whole cow panel for anybody who hasn't been following along. I made pretty much from here down uh, from scratch. And right here, the shape when I welded it to the uh, door jam was just a little off. And this was just a little high. So I ended up just taking a little cut right along the edge all the way down to the um, to the hinge here and I pulled it in and tacked it and then welded it up and now everything is nice and flush again I'm working with the skill I have so this will need some filler it's not like some of these guys on Instagram they're perfect metal finish stuff um, it's just doing what I can with what I got and the skills and patience so what I ended up doing is I took some silicon bronze to build up this edge here the door gap was too large and basically I figured out the best solution was to build up the door gap here. So I've been using in past handful of projects, silicon bronze for this type of work. You can see how you, if I can get the angle right, I used a little bit in here to fill this factory seam. And uh, I like it because you're, it's much, it's stronger than just like tack welding it and letting it or, or bondoing it. So it's actually fused together. Um, you can see there's some pits that were in my welds there. I put a couple little spots in there again still a little wavy but trying to fill in some of the big pits and little spots that were next to my weld and i can't really get in there the hammer and dolly them unfortunately so i worked on that in here um, i also worked on kind of closing out the the uh the dash in here so this weird little spot there's a ton going on and i basically welded and filled and made a little piece in here and then used some silicon bronze to fill in there and kind of wick it all together. I still have to take the windshield off. There's a little spot in here where there's need to make a filler piece, but I'm trying to get all this done before I pull the windshield. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass. Just gotta get my arm under the dash. So anyways, this is nice because it's all capped and filled in. This was just a cavity, which I can show you on, like on the other side, but it's fit, everything's fitting up pretty good there. And it's nice to have some sort of door gap and door that sort of fits. A little better than it did. So this is what I was working with. We started on the other side. You can see this is like where I cut away the original body line and stuff here. I just cut it out and I left a little piece here and you know there's a weird gap there and you see the gap's pretty big on this one right in here. Just when I made this cow panel I didn't get it perfectly right so I'm gonna have to build up that edge a little bit and then in here you can see what I had before I fixed the other side so you can see that piece I made it wasn't all filled in so that's what I got to work on on this side we'll get it capped up it's a lot of work takes a lot of time and this is just the part that's not very easy to, to video for you guys but figured I'd show it a little bit so I'm gonna get busy on this start silicon bronzing doing silicon bronze on the edge there and try and get some sort of remnants of a gap here um, in this next little bout, a little bit of work.
All right, so I got this top gap tuned up pretty good. Um, it's fairly symmetrical and everything uh, from both sides. And I've been using, or to keep it symmetrical, if you will, I've been using this little gap guide tool. It's a little suction cup one I got from Eastwood. I got a set of them. Honestly, I think you're supposed to kind of like set them like this, but I end up just holding the thing and getting the little feeler gauges and using the same ones. So got them in there and it all fits pretty good. Um, now we need to do this side from here to here, which is a area I've been kind of dreading. Um, essentially, this is just when I was making all these panels from scratch. Again, I can't reiterate it enough, just my skill level. Um, I know there's gonna be guys that are really, really good at this stuff and they're gonna say I'm a hack because I didn't nail it on the first try. So what I am doing is just filling the gap in to make everything look nice. So um, this gap is pretty far off. I got a lot of play in there. So I have this little eighth inch round bar stock. Instead of trying to fill it all uneven like with the, uh, with the silicon bronze, I think what I'm gonna use is, do is use this round bar stock. Cause I can actually fit it in there and then sand it down. It's a little tight, but what I can do is just tell, take like the belt sander or whatever and get a nice, but, uh, a nice fit. Now, when I'm down here in the center, it actually is probably about right. So I'd rather have a little more that I could sand down than keep having to weld on the edge, weld on the edge to build it up and then it's gonna get all uneven and it takes a lot longer, honestly. So when I have smaller gaps like what we needed here, it's a weird shape, I'll just build it up with the silicone bronze and it works uh, pretty quickly that way. But with this, I can just kind of go in and keep it all tight and as I'm tacking it, I'll form it to the shape of the cowl in the door and then if there's any excess sticking up or in, we can just carefully with the flap disc or the belt sander, knock it all down and make it even and it should look pretty good for the hack that I am. So I'm gonna get started here and start tacking this piece up. Whatever I have excess left over at the end, um, I'll probably just cut off before I do the final tack. So I've got a lot of welding to do today. So after a holiday and a bunch of international visitors, we got a bunch done on this car. I've worked on it sporadically 
through the past two weeks um, and have a lot of hours into it. It probably doesn't seem like a lot got done, but uh, I'm gonna call it quits for this video. So a couple things on the passenger side, show you guys, just, we'll just show you on one side because it's easier. Got the door gap pretty consistent here. There's some little grinder marks and stuff for me knocking my welds down where I added um, filler material and got a little too aggressive with the flap disc to a uh, little mini um, flap disc thing. So that's all just minor stuff that can be filled in with plastic filler, no problem, sanding scratches, etc. Um, but I got the gap, you know, 99% out of metal. Um, it'll be 99% out of metal when it's done, which is good. So I got that all set up. The other thing I did is on Model A's, uh, originally there's like a door gap right here, and I ended up filling or adding pieces to it now so that it overlaps. So I put a little cap on here. You can see there's some silicon bronze I used just to fill in imperfections. And uh, now the door overlaps. And that's how Model A's are for anybody that's not familiar. Um, if you're looking at the car, there's a gap behind the door where it overlaps. And um, I think what I'm gonna do is put a little piece of like seal or something, a foam seal um, that will take up that gap to look a little better. But side profile is looking a lot better now that we have some gaps. We have the dash stuff fitting a little bit better in here and over there. So that's all looking a little better, but I still have a lot of work to do off camera, so I'm gonna kind of call it quits. Um, the last thing I wanna check, I'm gonna put you guys on the tripod is, I grabbed the louvered hood I had. It's actually for a 32, I got it at a swap meet somewhere. And I wanna test fit it on the car and see Steve and I were kind of just discussing that the lines of the car might be a little better with a hood. So I picked up this hood, I think it's Carlisle or something. I don't remember, Charlotte. Can't even remember anymore, but might have been Charlotte. But cool louvered hood from a 32 says something, honey something each. But the whole idea is just to get an idea of the line of the car. Steve's gonna ooh and ah in the background if it looks good or say if it doesn't. <laughs> so hopefully it looks kind of cool. So I'm just gonna slide this on. And of course the bead doesn't match because this is 32 and this is Model A, but it kind of fits in pretty good. So we're mainly looking at that side profile. And I think it helps the car a lot. I do too. Yeah. It gives you that whole body line all the way up from the nose to the tail. Yeah. Yeah, and it kind of, yeah, it's just, it felt really open, I think, because the engine sits so low in this car versus like the Arden or some of the other cars mm -hmm. where the engine sits up in the car higher. Yep. But sitting so low, yeah, I think that gives a nice view, side profile, and just kind of. It yeah, it swoops right smooth. into the windshield. I, I, I like it. I, I like the way the hood top looks on it. Right. Now, I like the I like the spear here. I don't know how I'm going to make that work exactly, but I'll have to make a new hood that has oh, right. the bead. The bead here, it's either smooth. I can either do smooth where mm -hmm. you cut the hood sits up higher and there's right. no bead. So you have this bead kind of just end, and then the hood's up higher okay. here, yep. and end, it just ends and it's smooth and it's mm -hmm. a one piece hood. Or you make the bead line up with that one and have a spear, which is Right. Um, definitely cool. I guess the body line is one of the things, I guess, that helps it kind of flow, if you will. Right. So if you get rid of that, I don't know if that will, what effect that'll give, that'll take away from it. That's a good question, yeah. Or it's way easier for me to make it without having to do the belt, the belt line. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, yeah. Because it just, it just has to roughly land above that mm -hmm. and then the rest doesn't. Really mad. Yeah, because so, it's got an uninterrupted, uninterrupted body line all the way. All the way. So yeah. it might be cool. I do. I really like that spear in the front. I don't know why the, the <laughs> pointiness to it. So that would be kind of cool to do that. And mm -hmm. of course, we could do some louvers to match what's going on on the trunk. Wheel. Yeah. But yeah. So I, I kind of agree. I think the bit, the body line would be ideal. I think so too. It, it, ties it into the car. Yeah. All right, so at least we figured out here at the end, Steve and I were kind of just brainstorming that the hood is definitely, you know, hood top is definitely what the car needs. So I'll have to start planning out making patterns and stuff for a hood top that we'll have to build for the car. In the meantime, I'm gonna continue kind of off camera 
dolling up some more stuff and doing some more metal work, working on edges and gaps and stuff like that. Um, you know, again, this video was a matter of like, I don't know, probably three or four days worth of work just of getting gaps and stuff kind of close, if you will, not even perfect. And there's still a lot more to do. This is the part when we start getting into making a car kind of nice, like we did with the free T. There is um, hundreds of hours of work just getting things close enough to even start putting mud on it. If you're not trying to like build door gaps out of mud and you know make the whole car have an inch of mud on it, we got to do all this type of work. Of course, the car is going to have plenty of filler on it, but we don't want to be doing things like door gaps and stuff. That if you ch if the door gets banged, you're going to knock a you know a half inch of filler off the edge of the door. So I have to keep going back and refining things. So. Um, yeah, so next video I'm going to try. I know I said in the beginning of this video it just didn't work out. I was too ambitious. I'm going to hopefully next video have most of the cow and the dash metal work to the point where I can start doing some leading. I know a lot of people have been asking about that on the channel. So I'm going to try and do some leading on this, these body lines and cow area in the top uh, dash to cow kind of union. So there's some areas I can't get in with a hammer and dolly to fix. So there's some low spots of stuff that would be perfect for doing leading. So that is the goal for the next update on this car is to have some of that stuff ready and we can just kind of do the top of the cow and show you guys making things nice and smooth using old school lead work. So thank you guys for following along. Appreciate it. Hopefully you picked up maybe some tips along the way how I do some of this stuff and it might help you with your project. Catch you later.